Dr. Lakshmi Narayanan sir, who finished his DM Neurologist at Ames, a young practicing pediatric neurologist and epilepsy specialist. He is known among his patients for empathy, caring attitude, straight talk and approachability. When it comes to neurology, there is no left and no right. She is always to the point. So I welcome Dr. Uh, Lima Pauli ma'am, Professor of Pediatric Neurology, ICH, Chennai. I think what's known about neurology is still scattered and uncertain. Let's organize it here with a case presentation by Dr. Raghavendra sir from Tirnal Valley Medical College. So I think uh, neurology case is the major case for most of you. It's a long case. So let us uh, go through in a systematic way. So we, uh, as examiners, we have seen the patient just now. We wanted it to be as like a typical examination. We didn't want to see all the details before and be biased. So go through the case systematically without any bias. Good afternoon, sir. And good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon to all. So this is a five years, two months old child named Yatika. Second born of second degree consanguineous marriage residing in Vellur with the history given by the mother whose reliability is good, who has come with complaints of frequent falls while walking which started at the age of three and a half years of age, that is before one and a half years. Now, and then complaints of difficulty in speaking speech for the past one year and complaints of jerky movements of upper limb and lower limb for the past five months and progressive decrease in visual acuity for the past five months. So the child was apparently normal till three and a half years of age. After which her mother initially noticed frequent falls while walking initially. The falls gradually increased in intensity and hence this prevented the child from walking. And then the child had difficulty in getting up from sitting posture and difficulty in climbing stairs. Now at present, she is able to walk independently but associated with frequent falls. Next, mother noticed child having jerky movements involving mostly the upper limbs lasting for a few seconds. Initially started at one episode per day during walking. Initially the jerks were present during walking. Now it has progressively increased. And whenever there is associated fever or any intense, uh, any illness, the jerks become increased in intensity. But there is no history of ALOC during these episodes. Subsequently, child developed difficulty in speaking, that is in the form of a scanned speech, and also reduced in the frequency and volume and intensity of the word for the past five months. Then the child developed difficulty in seeing distant objects and progressive decline in visual acuity, which is worsening for the past five months. No history of acute loss of consciousness. The child is able to recognize the mother and other persons. The child is oriented to time, place and person. The child is interested in surroundings, playing. And there is history of minor change in behavior for the past five months in the form of personality disturbances. History of speech disturbance as elicited for the past five months. History of memory disturbances present. The child has not been, initially she was studying LKG, now she has not been going to school for the past one and a half years. No history of altered sleep pattern. No history of excessive irritability or emotional disturbances. No history of early handedness. Next. No history of any abnormal smell. Child is able to follow the objects but has difficulty in seeing the near and distant, mostly distant objects. No history of abnormal eye movements. Are there a, is there any history suggestion of cranial disturbance? No ma'am. No. no. Skip. Then no history of, uh, there is history of flailness of limbs. History of lifting the arm above the head. History of difficulty in combing the hair. History of difficulty in writing or mixing food, buttoning and dressing and undressing in the form of proximal and distal muscle. Both are involved. History of difficulty in lifting the head and getting up from bed, but able to turn in the bed. History of difficulty in getting up from sitting posture. History of difficulty in climbing up and downstairs. History of difficulty in holding the slippers while walking. History of tripping of the toes while walking. And there is history of clumsiness of movements present. And there is history of difficulty in walking in the form of gait disturbance. Child is able to perceive touch and pain sensation. No history of any altered sensation. History of clumsiness of movements present. History of intention tremors plus as noted by the mother while picking up object the child has tremors. That, there is history of scanned speech present. There is inability to perform alternative movement. And the child is unaware of voiding for the past six months. There is no history of uh, excessive sweating or change in bubble habits. No history of progressive increase in head signs. No history of headache or vomiting. 
in pertaining to the etiological history there is no history of palpitation or breathlessness there is no history of recurrent sinopulmonary infections or difficulty in breathing no history of any fever with altered sensorium no history of any loose stools or frothy expulsive stools no history of abnormal faces no history of any abnormal urine odor no history of recurrent fever irritability or obstetronic posturing no history of abnormal color of the hair skin or any skin rash no history of early morning lethargy antenatal natal and postnatal event are uneventful developmental history gross motor initially until 3 years of age the child was uh, acquired normal motor milestones after which she had regression of milestones and now child is able to walk with support while walking independently has frequent falls developmental quotient of 20 fine motor initially up to 3 years of age the child was able to copy circle now the child is only able to draw a vertical or horizontal so that also with tremors developmental quotient of 40 language and speech the child uh, know, knew the full name age and sex by three years of age and recited poem by three and a half years of age now the child is uh, has difficulty in speech and is able to say one to ten but up to twenty if we if we just recall so the developmental question is around eighty social and cognitive up to three years of age the child was okay but now the developmental question is around sixty vision and hearing fixes and follows light able to turn well called upon the name there is no exaggerated startle uh, to noise Immunization history, immunized according to age, participated in the MR and pulse polio, no AEFI following immunization. Dietary history, there is 200 calorie deficit and 2 grams of protein deficit. Family history with the 3 generation pedigree chart. There is no family members associated with similar illnesses. There is one uh, history of neonatal death in the sibling and the first child with 7 days of life. Probably mother gives history of cyanotic congenital heart disease. Socioeconomic history belongs to class 3 according to modified Kobusami scale. So summary. It's a 5 years, 2 months old female child, second degree concern as parents, a regression of already acquired milestones for the past one and a half years, initially started as frequent falls with myoclonic jerks ex exacerbated during the illnesses, progressive decline in cognition, speech and personality decline, proximal and distal muscle weakness with gait ataxia, motor incoordination with clumsiness of movements due to cerebellar involvement, progressive loss of visual acuity over the past five months, no cranial nerve or sensory disturbances, probably a neurodegenerative disorder with predominantly gray matter involvement. So, what do you make out of these uh, frequent falls? What do you think these are? So, these are, uh, well, uh, these are that like is drop first attacks. Symptom. Yes. Sir. That is the very first symptom she started with. Okay. So, she started with the frequent falling down while walking that progressively uh, worsened to the current stage and even now if you see the examination okay. if you see the walking is fine except for she falls so much she is uh, uh, unable to walk because of the fear of falling, falling. Down. okay yes so what is what do you think is uh, one it phenomenon? can be because of cerebellar involvement sir cerebellar involvement can cause frequent falls or it can be myoclonic jerks resulting in falls or some movement disorders uh, kinesthesia the mo movement disorders which can result in falls so what are these called as like frequent drop attacks falls? drop yeah. attacks so the drop attacks in this situation like you know it's a progressive illness so you have drop attacks what are the different types of drop attacks you have so you said myoclonic drop attacks that is one type that is very common in this kind of a progressive neurological illness so myoclonic drop attacks is one other drop attacks can you have tonic drop attack yes can you have a, a atonic drop attack? Yes, sir. Atonic, atonic seizures. Can you have epileptic spasm as drop attack? Salam so spas. all the four types are there. Drop attacks can be myoclonic, tonic, atonic, or epileptic spasm. So which one you think uh, she has? Because there is a history of myoclonic jerks. Myoclonics. Because so of because it's a myoclonic drop attacks. Most likely it's a myoclonic drop, drop attacks. Attack. So when a child who is otherwise completely normal acutely starts with the frequent myoclonic drop attacks while walking. Okay, so what are the differential diagnoses you think of? Myoclonic drop attacks in which diseases are common? Yes, in Neiman Pick disease mm -hmm. and then uh, neuronal steroid lipofusinosis, mm -hmm. the NCL, and then uh, infant uh, juvenile Krabs disease, mm -hmm. metachromatic leukodystrophy. Okay, you are thinking of only neurodegenerative disorders. Any infections? Post infections? Yes, SSP. Ah. So that is one of the first diagnoses, first diagnoses you should be thinking about because that is the very typical presentation of SSP. SSP. Okay. In a completely normal child starts falling down with a myoclonic fall down. Okay. And the myoclonic jerks, what type of myoclonic jerks she has? Can you uh, describe it a bit more? With the involving the both upper limbs uh, and the in, in lower limbs and sudden with a few seconds lasting for a few seconds. 
So it's mainly only when she has the intercurrent illnesses. Yes. At rest, she doesn't have myoclonus anymore. Only during intercurrent illnesses, she has resting myoclonus. Resting myoclonus. Otherwise, she has only drop attacks. Drop attacks. Okay. So that is one of the... Uh, so again, this is a progressive illness with the episodic worsening during the intercurrent illnesses. Again, that might mean some of the... What does it mean? When there is a worsening in the intercurrent illnesses. What are IEMs, the diseases? Inborn error of metabolism. So any metabolic disorder metabolic disorders. or any... There are many neurodegenerative disorders, disorders, not a metabolic alone, that can have a acute worsening, episodic worsening, especially during infections, intercurrent illnesses. So this may be one of them. Okay. So what do you make of the progressive decline in the speech and progressive cognitive decline? So... Uh, where, do you, involvement. where do you localize the lesion here? Gray matter involvement, sir. Because of the progressive cognition decline and because of speech and personality decline and because of uh, progressive loss of visual acuity. These three points favors towards gray matter involvement. Okay. Cerebellum involvement can occur both in gray and white matter, but initially it occurs in white matter and late involvement can occur in gray matter involvement. So myoclonic jerks again goes in goes favor, of, uh, favor of gray matter, gray matter DVD and mm -hmm. it is one of the earliest features here. Yes. And uh, the other thing you did not mention is there was never a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. Yes, yes. No so that you should mention explicitly because we have most of the cases we have generalized tonic-clonic seizures also once in a while during these ca uh, cases. And uh, is there anything against uh, uh, gray matter DVD here? All what of them are towards. Okay. Yes. And uh, why do you have progressive visual loss in gray matter DVD? What are the reasons for progressive visual loss? Involvement of the ganglion cells, initially from the, from the inner to the outer ganglion cells, the involvement will occur, sir. Okay. So basically, the retina is the extension of your brain. brain. So when you have a neuronal degeneration in the brain, so that has a similar embryonic origin, so that also has a degeneration. So it commonly presents as uh, retinitis pigmentosa. Yes, okay. So do you have any uh, evening or no. night blindness here? No night blindness. That sir. you have no to mention when blindness. you have a progressive visual uh, acuity loss, you have to mention explicitly like uh, there is no night blindness. night blindness. There is no difference in uh, bright or uh, darkness. darkness. Anything more? Um, for the first one, frequent falls. What are the other causes for frequent falls? What are the causes for fall? Why do you fall when you walk? Vertigo. Vertebro basilar yeah. insufficiency. Good. Arrhythmias. Okay. Syncope. Migraine. Neurological causes? Migraine. It could be due to an human lesion. It could be due to your buckling of knees, your cordyceps weakness. Hypotonia. Okay, tripping of toes. Then due to ataxia, due to unsteadiness, you may fall. Maybe due to your movement disorder, you can have a fall. Uh, and again, uh, Sarah has told you about ex uh, uh, detailed uh, about the drop attacks. Maybe due to your drop attack, tonic seizure, a tonic seizure, or a myoclonic seizure, or a epileptic spasm, you may fall down. Other causes? Narcolepsy, cataplexy. Okay? So these are the causes for frequent falls or falls during walking. Then next is, why do you consider uh, neurodegenerative disorder in this particular child? The child was Other normal. Points. Number one, there is an regression, regression of the, of the milestone. milestones. milestones. Sometimes there may be a, only a developmental delay. In such cases, if it is associated with the grass hypotonia and if you do not have an uh, uh, explained cause, for that developmental delay, in that circumstances also, you will be thinking in terms of a degenerative disorder. That is number one. First point is regression of the attained milestone or loss of acquired milestone. Number two, very important point is progressive. progressive. Unless otherwise it is progressive, you will not think in terms of neurodegenerative disorder. Okay. Number three, cognition there are no associated, associated. Uh, ICP symptoms. Maybe this may be a slow growing tumor. Who knows? Okay. No increased, uh, no symptoms of increased ICP. Fourth, fourth point towards is whenever there is a positive family history. Of course, in this particular case, we do not have a positive family history, but we have a history of second degree consanguinity in this uh, in this uh, in this child. So, whenever there is a positive family history, then there are signs, certain signs and symptoms like you are exaggerated start or a presence of a uh, CRS that is your cherry red spot. Okay, certain, neuro, certain specific neurological as well as non-neurological signs which may give you a clue to you that it could be a neurodegenerative disorder. Okay, because of loss of acquired milestone number two, it is progressive. He is thinking in terms of neurodegenerative disorder in this particular case. Number step two will be whenever you have such a symptomatology, Sarah has asked, myoclonic seizures, which one will come to your mind as a pediatrician? 
SSP should come to your uh, the mind as the first possibility rather than thinking other causes. Okay. So, what are the conditions that are called the pseudo regression? Say, fast, do not sleep. Pseudo regression. Slow viral illnesses, your nutritional deficiencies, heavy metal poisoning, toxins, poisons, and some uh, just now you had earlier your uh, meningitis, any post meningitic sequelae, or any chronic CNS infection sequelae, TBI sequelae. Okay, and then uh, slow growing SOL, epileptic encephalopathy. Suppose a LGS child, Lenach just had syndrome, will the child have all the, uh, all the milestones normally or cognition normally? No. So, epileptic encephalopathies, last but not the least, will be primary psychiatric illness. So, these conditions, uh, uh, slow viral illnesses, you have to include SSP, HIV, encephalopathy, etc. Okay? If you are going to uh, UK, then you have to remember the CJD also. So, all these conditions should come to your mind and you should rule out all these conditions before branding it as a degenerative disorder. Then step 3 will be your whether it is a white matter or a grey matter. In this particular case, it is a grey matter. How to distinguish between a white matter and a grey matter? Loss of early loss of motor milestones here, cognitive decline. Next. Seizures are late. Here seizures are early. Then especially myoclonic seizures. Then Vision. Visual impairment again, grey matter. Here, if at all, if occur, it is due to optical atrophy. Here, we have macular changes. Okay? Then, presence of long track signs. Long track here, pyramidal. Okay? So, in, in the later part of the illness, you will have both. But you have to, uh, from the history, that's why history is very important. You have to find out from the history which one was the first one affected, which got affected first. Okay? Right. Anything else for? At this level? And this progressive loss of visual acuity <coughs> could be either due to an optic atrophy or an RP. And of course, we do not have the history of uh, uh, loss of our progressive loss of vision during darkness or during evening. Okay, right. General examination, child is conscious, oriented, interested. One, one minute. Yes. Another thing in the history of present illness, he has nicely put it. History of uh, uh, exaggerated startle to even for uh, normal noises. And then uh, history of any history of acute encephalopathy or acute deteri deterioration during intraparental illness. Okay. Any history suggestive of irritability and uh, incessant cry and opisthotonic posture. Crabs disease. Infancy. Crabs All disease. these histories will give us a clue what could be the type of degenerative Degen disorder or what could be the etiology. Okay. Right. Child is conscious, oriented, interested in surroundings, recognizes mother, no pallorectal, cyanosis, clubbing, or pedal edema, or lymphadenopathy, head to foot examination, hair and scalp appears normal, no dysmorphic faces, eyes, cornea clear, no cataract, oral cavity is normal, uh, chest, limbs, normal, abdomen, neurocutaneous marker in the form of cephalite spot of 7 cross 3 centimeters present in the left side of the thigh, no other skin findings or neurocutaneous markers, and then sp spine is normal, no skeletal deformity. Anthropometry, weight is 16 kg, 0 to minus 2 standard deviation, normal, height is 109 centimeters, 0 to minus 2 standard deviation, normal, Weight for height minus 1 to minus 2 standard deviation. Head circumference 48 centimeter between minus 2 to minus 2 standard deviation. Mid upper arm circumference is normal. Vitals Skip the normal. Vitals. She is a stable child. Examination of the central nervous system. Higher mental function. Child is conscious. Oriented to time, place and person. Slurred as scanned speech is present. Personality disturbance is present. You have, to, you have to call it. It's a severe dysarthria. Severe dysarthria. With scanning of the speech. With Echolalia. Echolalia. She has echolalia. Whatever her spontaneous speech is much, much reduced. Whatever you are going to say, she is going to repeat the same words for a few minutes. So she has uh, perseveration, the same things she repeatedly tells, yes. and she has echolalia. echolalia. Her spontaneous speech, narration, all that is gone now. Okay. So this is very important, uh, uh, single most important finding. So severe dysarthria. Severe dysarthria. Yes. Cognitive impairment and uh, not able to recall the recent or remote memory. Intelligence could not be tested. Right so handedness. The examination don't say cognitive impairment because you are not going to measure it. Measure. So the IQ. examiner will ask IQ. you how did you measure the cognitive impairment? That we are not going IQ, to do it. Yes. So don't do that. Intelligence and personality be behavior disturbance also it has been already discussed in the history. Yes. So remove these two parts. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Crayon of examination. So, uh, positive findings? Sir, fundus uh, pallor of the disc with surrounding mild retinal pigmentary changes alone is present, sir. Other than that, all cranial nerves are normal. Uh, optic nerve, visual acuity, the child is not able, uh, only fixing and following light. And then, 
keeping in front of the while while we write any letter she is able to keep in front but she is not able to read the letters so only so she is uh, able to look at the uh, objects very closely very closely she comes to you near to your face uh, she is looking at you but in a, from a distance she is not able to uh, look at you so she has a decreased decreased visual, visual, visual acuity, acuity. Yes. and then other kind of normal sir then spinomotor system bulk there is no wasting tone there is uh, hypotonia in all four limbs but best observed power is 3 by 3 uh, by 5 in all four limbs this is testing of the tone so in the hypotonia you have to um, of course the uh, dtrs are coming up Next. so the hypotonia you have to qualify whether it's a central hypotonia it's a peripheral hypotonia so that is in a combination with the tone and dtr, DTR but yes. better to qualify that what do you think is a hypotonia reason here Sorry. And uh, you have many uh, degenerative brain disorders and other diseases with the neuropathy only, also. Sir. Yes, sir. So this is very important. Not it's a central only, sir. Just because it's a uh, degenerative brain disorder does not mean it's always will central. be central, central hypotonia. Yes, sir. So you have many disorders with uh, central neurodegeneration with peripheral neuropathy. So your DTS may be completely absent also in many of the de <coughs> uh, degenerative brain disorders. So you have to be very careful yes, in examining and qualifying whether it is a central hypotonia or a peripheral hypotonia. hypotonia or sometimes they can have a mixed pattern mixed also depending on the DTRs. Yes sir. Do you think here it is central? Yes sir, central sir because the DTRs are normal sir. Biceps, triceps, supinator, knee and ankle jerk are normal sir. There is no uh, reduced reflexes and superficial reflexes are normal. The plantar is extensor sir. sir. In so the in the DTR whatever reflexes you have to mention especially when it is a DTR. Jaja, I mentioned in the trigeminal nerve. Yeah, okay. I have to mention it again here, sir. Jaja. Ja. And other signs? Next. Cerebellar signs, next, sir. Okay. Next. Cerebellar signs. Scanned, uh, scanned speech with echolalia, with the severe dysarthria, then hypotonia, unsteady, broad based gait, and disdain agokinesia, finger nose chest is present, intention tremors, there is no nystagmus. Sensor system able to appreciate touch, pain, and pressure sensation. No signs of meningeal irritation. Spinal cranium is normal. So other systems are normal. In degenerative brain diseases, do you look for anything else apart from the cerebellar signs, apart from the jaw jerk? There are some primitive reflexes primitive. that may come back. Like in the neonatal period, you can have some of the primitive reflexes that goes away. Yes, After sir. the, uh, when the patient regresses so uh, severely, ADNR. they can have some of the primitive, primitive reflexes. reflexes. What are they? ADNR. No. Yeah. Sir is asking about release reflexes. Release phenomena. Pomo mental reflex and uh, snout reflex, no. pout and uh, glabella tap, okay. yes. exaggerated glabella without uh, habituation. So this always you have to mention in a degenerative brain yes, disease. Yes sir. Anything else? Examination. In CP primitive reflexes is a must whereas in uh, degenerative disorders, release, reflex. release reflexes you have to mention. Okay. Yes ma'am. So can you describe the gate again? For the benefit of the audience? Yes, sir. Now the broad based, screen. broad based gait uh, with uh, not able to stand. Broad based stance with the broad based gait with the fall during the walking next video. And her knees, about her knees? What about her knee? With knees, knees flexed, sir. Yeah, so, so there's flexed. a crouch and there was a slight uh, uh, trunkal flexion towards the right side, if you observe. What is it called? Neurology phenomena, trunkal flexion. Okay, fine. It's too much for your level. It's called camptocormia. Okay, it is a trunkal flexion that might indicate there may be a, one is a fixed uh, flexion means there may be scoliosis, that's one thing. You said there was no scoliosis. So if it is a functional thing, not a fixed thing, it may be indicative of a segmental trunkal dystonia. Okay, dystonia. And she was uh, crouching and uh, the feet are flat feet. By the way she is walking, you can say that, flat feet. And there was a slight uh, uh, claw of the toes, clawing yes. of the toes. Hmm? Yes. And what did you observe at the end of this video? What, what, what was that phenomenon? Fall, drop okay. it. So basically she was walking without tripping over. Tripping. She was uh, buckling in the knees and suddenly just suddenly uh, falls. falling down. This is a typical uh, drop attack that she is having at the moment. Yes. Yes.
so it's not that audible but uh, so the scanning and the cerebellar speech won't be very apparent when you just count the numbers it won't be that apparent okay but when she, she is She's able to tell her name she all the three syllables of her name she is saying very uh, differently in a scanned manner yatika is her name she says ya ti kha so that uh, scanning of each syllable is very characteristic so counting alone won't be enough no, to no. to uh, characterize all the components of a dysarthria yes, sir. Yeah, well, drawing circle, she is not able to draw a circle, she is just because of the weakness. So, summary. So, five years, two months. In the general examination, what are the other things will you look for? Neurogodin. Neurogodin is Marcus, which we have seen. Scalp. Scalp deep. That's microcephaly. Microcephaly. Before that, we should know what are the conditions that will come under oig matter degenerative disorder and what are the conditions that will come under grey matter. Otherwise, we will not know. Theory is very important unless otherwise your mind knows you, are, you will not see in the particular child. Okay? Fine. Now enumerate the oig matter degenerative disorders. Alexander disease, Kenavans disease. Start with Alexander, my dear. How, how many cases you have seen? Metachromatic Metachromatic uh, adrenal leukodystrophy. Adrenal leukodystrophy. Crabbies. Crabbies. Next. Alexander, can I have one? Can I have one? Please, yes, much better. Yeah. And uh, all these six you should remember. Beyond that, we don't want. Okay? That's not your level. Next, grey matter. Tay-Sex disease. Start with MPS. MD. Okay, mucopolysaccharidosis. Okay, then? Tay-Sex. What is that? GM2? GM, G, GM1 gangliosidosis. GM2 gangliosidosis. GM1 gangliosidosis. Neuronal serial lipofusinosis. Gotchas. Neiman. Next. Neuronal serial lipofusinosis. Mucolipidosis, silodosis, fucosidosis, manosidosis. Okay. Anything else? Do not forget about Infectious cause. Alpha, alpha syndrome. Okay. All these things uh, you should remember. Okay. Now having enumerated the, the name of the diseases. Now you should know at least four or five points for each. Today you are going to read and write in your notebook. Okay. Right. Now. The neurometabolic disorders. Suppose there is a microcephaly. Which neurodegenerative disorder will come to your mind? Red syndrome. Ah. Uh, Grey matter, red. Red. Neurodegenerative, uh, sorry, NCL. NCL. Okay. For uh, this one? Crabbies and Pelicious. Pelicious, Under white matter. Macro? Here, Alexander. Alexander Kanaman. Okay, here. Grey matter? Tay-Sex. MPS. Tay-Sex, Crabbies. Tay-Sex and Sandoff. Sandoff. Okay, right. Then? Scalp. Okay. scalp. Next to head. Ma'am, scalp. Suppose scalp lesions. Uh, Neiman big type C. Neiman big type C. Horizontal. Supranuclear gaze. Horizontal ophthalmoparesis. Vertical gaze palsy, Neiman big type C. Very good. Vertical gaze palsy or vertical ophthalmoparesis, Neiman big C. Whereas, uh, gotchas type 3. Gotcher. Jonel gotcher. Okay. You should look for nystagmus, can't track optic. Can't track optic. Cave ring also. And the most important thing in the eye is CRS. CRS. Is, uh, CRS. Now tell me the conditions in which you will mm. have CRS. Neiman big disease, uh, silodosis. GM Tay-Sachs disease. Good. Tay-Sachs. GM2 gangliosidosis. Mm. GM1 gangliosidosis. In Tay-Sachs, it is said 95% of the children will have children's CRS. Children's problem. Okay. So, it occurs so consistently in Tay-Sachs and Sandoff. So, GM2 will be your first possibility. Sandoff. Next is GM1. Next GM. is? Neiman pig disease. Neiman pig. Okay. Sandoff. Uh, uh, and then okay. silodosis. Silodosis. Do not forget. Silodosis is otherwise called cherry red spot myoclonus. Myoclonus. Okay, think about silodosis. Cherry red spot myoclonus. So, silodosis should be. Suppose there is an exaggerated startle. What are the causes for exaggerated startle? Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs. GM2. 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 Crab egg. Crab GM1 also you can have anything, anything else for uh, the abnormal startle. Pyridoxin dependency. Okay. <laughs> Pyridoxin dependency. So these are the conditions that are associated with abnormal startle. Mm -hmm. Okay. How will you distinguish between a normal startle and an abnormal startle? Why do you say it is an excessive acoustic uh, motor reaction? Number one, 
in a normal struggle you will have a flexion response whereas in here it is most of mostly it is a ex, uh, extensor response okay extension number 2 this adapts okay here there is no adaptation in abnormal struggle okay we have finished dies next suppose there is a dysmorphic phases mbs very good mbs mucolipidosis mucolipidosis one more diagnosis i will leave you zelvegus gm1 gm1 okay right anything else pa similarly in the general examination suppose there is an organomegaly tesax gm1 ganglion cells gm10 marks gm2 gm2 ganglion cells tesax is one thing which should not which is not associated with any organomegaly okay remember that tesax is also no organomegaly in tesax gotcha's name and pick gotcha name and pick tesax okay right persistent mongolian spots ah persistent mongolian spots sir is asking gm1 One. clouding of cornea mucopolysaccharidosis mucopolysaccharidosis similarly sialidosis sialidosis mucolipidosis what are the other uh, dysmorphic features that is there in uh, gm1 one is mongolian spots the face is then what else you can have you can have hernias inguinal hernia umbilical hernia that's very common in gm1 ganglion cirrhosis so that very typical uh, coarse species with hernias with uh, persistent mongolian spot it's and uh, gingival hypertrophy gingival hypertrophy all these together it's uh, 100% it's a gm1 yes macroglasias macroglasias nice sir macroglasias yeah. thank you macroglasia mpa mr Pompey, very good, my dear. There are two other conditions, but uh, uh, considering this neurodegenerative disorder, these two should come to your mind. Deafness, hard of hearing. Which two is hard of hearing? Metachromatic locus. MPS, but mm. it is not a sensory neural deafness. You should remember conductive. that is only a conductive mm. deafness. Okay, that's only a conductive deafness in MPS. Other things, uh, suppose they are asking. Suppose there is a hard of hearing, you can say perhaps it's normal disorders, mitochondrial disorders like that. Okay, right. Everything we have covered, and then the next question. Yes. Five years, two months old female child, second degree concern is marriage with uneventful antenatal and postnatal history with normal development till three point three and a half years. Now developmental regression in all domains for the past one and a half years. Progressive decline in cognition, progressive loss of visual acuity with myoclonic jerks, with cerebellar ataxia, with broad based gait, with scanning speech, with echolalia, with severe dysarthria. Pallor of the optic disc with retinal pigmentary changes, motor incoordination, cerebellar signs without any cranial nerve involvement or sensory disturbances. I would like to think of a neurodegenerative disorder with predominantly grey matter involvement without organomegaly with normal nutrition. Yeah. So go 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 back. So why do you think it's a neuronal cellular lipofuscinosis? As one of the possibility age uh, juvenile onset number one and then uh, presence of uh, uh, presence of uh, decline in cognition grey matter involvement sir so it's grey matter involvement without organomegaly next is with cerebellum involvement cerebellar ataxia with broad based gait with visual visual involvement which is progressive and uh, See, though visual um, progressive decreased vision is said in most of the DBD. Huh? Degenerative brain disorder, but one of the most characteristic disorders. Degenerative pigment characteristic. One of the most characteristic disorder that has a progressive visual loss in a history of like this with the myoclonic jerks. First possibility is NCL, and which is the most prevalent uh, grey matter DBD? Most prevalent grey matter DBD is NCL. NCL. Okay. So with a very characteristic progressive visual loss. and history of progressive cognitive decline and myoclonic jerks this is the one diagnosis that should come in your mind so neuronal serial lipofuscinosis as a first possibility is a very much with a characteristic features all the features are going towards that okay what other differential diagnosis you can offer juvenile gm2 gangliosidosis ma'am juvenile onset gm2 gangliosidosis but okay, so against against varieties are there in many but them. against it is no no exaggerated start till or no cherret spot no crs okay they are all against it similar neem and big type c juvenile onset but against it this vertical gaze palsy that yeah, is not there and after no paralysis is not there, not there. Okay. so against it silidosis against its coarse faces and cherret spot similarly it's not there sir okay 
anything apart from uh, uh, degenerative brain disease you can think infectious of infectious ssp infections ssp yeah, should have been done ssp we have not ruled out ssp yes. is one of the so apart from ncl your second diagnostic possibility should be ssp ssp okay other any other diagnosis any other differential diagnosis could it be lead poisoning another common disorder that can happen in our or any other toxic metabolic encephalopathy chronic encephalopathy so you have to keep a broad yeah. differential at this point again okay you cannot just uh, complete with the four gray matter dvd gray matter dvd is one of the very much high possibility so ncl we will agree but uh, we have to give other differential diagnosis also you cannot get just stuck with the gray matter dvd alone so ssp you should offer and uh, uh, could be uh, environmental also lead poisoning is one of the possibility but because of the second degree consanguineous marriage uh, so it's more likely autosomal recessive disorders that's why we are thinking of ncl as a first possibility any of mitochondrial also mitochondrial yes so any of these gray matter dbds you can say mitochondrial so mitochondrial is not a very unique uh, very uh, it can have a very broad spectrum of uh, different disorders so mitochondrial will be there in uh, uh, lower down in the possibility definitely any other matter okay so with with these in mind with uh, the few uh, uh, possibilities that we enumerated also so what is the single most in investigation important investigation you will order first MRI brain neuro imaging sir. okay so what will you see in no no don't go there what will see in ncl cerebral atrophy and, and cerebellar atrophy cerebellar atrophy cerebellar atrophy and we have a uh, periventricular deep white matter hyperintensity that hyperintensity. is symmetrical the combination of these two is very important cerebellar atrophy you have a wide, wide differential wide diagnosis. diagnosis it's not doesn't it doesn't tell you it's ncl but if you have a combination of these two the white matter hyperintensity and cerebellar atrophy then it is highly characteristic of ncl so in a sspe what will you have in a mri sspe so pareto occipital hyperintensity is again that is one of the characteristic features of sspe in mri okay yes. and um, are there any other uh, characteristic features you will have on mri any of these gm2 okay there are some characteristic features so go and read again yeah. so fine so mri you show show us wh what did it show in this child cerebellar and mild cerebral atrophy sir cerebral not much cerebellar foliae are prominent cerebellar again it's not severe only the foliae are prominent uh, do you have the sagittal section yes sir. yeah so again uh, vermian atrophy also is not very severe it's only just mild mm -hmm. foliae prominence you can see in this here you can see the foliae prominence in the midline worm is so it's a mild to moderate uh, cerebellar atrophy it's not a severe one and go back go back yeah so you have a periventricular white matter hyperintensity i'm not sure how well it is projecting on the back so can you see white yes. huh? hyperintensity is the flare flare sequence okay yes, so that is the combination of these two is so one of the characteristic features of uh, ncl so after seeing this mri again ncl is a possibility then other basic investigations okay mri is normal yes, sir. other basic investigations to rule out other disorders for urine metabolic syndrome to rule out the neurometabolic disorders and then cbc and then rft electrolytes and abg acid some like that to rule out all the other basic so once disorders. you have this patient see you are in the examination this patient is in front of you will you do urine organic acid no. uh, blood amino acid no no needs anyone who wants to do blood amino acid urine organic acid no no need it's not a dictum for any patient that comes to you with uh, some regression you have to do metabolic metabolic uh, profile that yield of metabolic profile is very low in such patients and it is not cost effective so there is no need for you to go through that yes. if you say that in the examination i will not uh, uh, forgive that okay you should not because we never discuss any of the amino acid or organic acid disorders in the differential diagnosis why do you want to do that what else you can do in the metabolic profile mitochondrial we thought about what else you can do csf lactate, lactate csf lactate blood so lactate arterial lactate csf, CSF lactate, lactate that makes sense yes. okay not amino acids or organic acids yes. okay what else you can do in the basic profile can you look at uh, rbcs some different vaculated vaculated lymphocytes in the vaculated lymphocytes in the peripheral smear sir okay can occur in ncl okay so now let us see uh, the mri the clinical picture is very characteristic we said ncl is the first possibility mri is the very characteristic again it is not uh, against and uh, 
what else you can do before going to the definitive investigation Ophthal ophthalmological screening okay that we did so it shows rp and mild pallor so that is there what else you can do erg okay electrocardiogram eeg eeg for seizures eeg what do you see in the eeg for my myoclonic myoclonic seizures pat okay so multiple multifocal spikes that's fine what else you can see in the uh, eeg in these patients ncl during photic stimulation can you see something so in a ncl in the photic stimulation you can have a exaggerated photic responses especially in the low frequency low frequency so eeg is one of the very important so if it is ssp what do you see in the eeg because that is one of the next possibilities we are having so that is why you should have a eeg okay ncl doesn't have a very characteristic eeg pattern but ssp eeg is the diagnosis so what do you have in eeg in ssp are they called as splits in ssp so they are, these are called g pets generalized periodic epileptiform discharges splits is a lateralized this is a generalized disorder it's a ssp so it's a generalized periodic epileptiform discharges it's called g pets similar to plets but it is generalized plets is a lateralized one side only so g pets in a periodic fashion every 4 seconds every 10 seconds she'll have a spasm along with that she'll have a eeg correlate they are called as or complexes or complexes they are periodic patterns so that is very characteristic eeg you don't get any other eeg that shows this kind of a periodic pattern the moment you look at the eeg you are sure of the diagnosis okay so how do you confirm ssp please sir erg okay see in these uh, uh, neurodegenerative disorders as madam was saying the ganglion cell layer atrophies slowly because it's also a neuron extension of the neuron so in the erg initially you will have a reduction in the amplitude if it is due to retinitis pigmentosa or it is due to ganglion cell layer degeneration you will have a reduction in the amplitude of the electro retinogram electro retinogram is like a, a waveform the amplitude will be reducing because the number of ganglion cells are less compared to the normal because of the atrophy because of the degeneration so you will have initially you will have a reduction later on it will be flat it will be absent response in the erg you can do vep also visual evoked potential initially again it will be low amplitude because of the ganglion cell layer loss and later on you will have a flat or absent response in the vep that causes cortical blindness that corresponds to your cortical blindness that is the end stage of most of the uh, as madam was saying most of the degenerative brain disorders once they reach end stage you will have all these findings at the end stage gray uh, dbd you won't be able to differentiate whether it's a gray matter or white matter you have to go back to the history of the onset then only you will be able to differentiate it will be decreased responses sir as sir has told in this study we have done the erg decreased ERG photopic and as well as photopic responses maybe a year later if you if we do it will, it may become extinct now coming to the investigations before that according to the age of the onset i have told you about the clinical picture uh, considering the clinical picture how to distinguish between a gray matter and white matter that is one type of classification number 2 will be according to the age of onset according to the age of onset what does your nelson say less than 2 years 0 to 2 years very infantile 2 to 2 to 5 years more than 5 years, than five years. Okay, more than 5 more years. than 5 years come under uh, late infant late infant and you should know uh, accordingly uh, the, uh, according to the age of onset what are the diseases that will present to you in the early infantile then late infantile then juvenile okay that is also another type of uh, another classification which you, which you should remember now coming to the investigations the first investigation of choice will be especially uh, uh, will be a neuroimaging and mri will be the investigation of choice and if it is a white matter degenerative disorder it, it gives you the clue what could be the thing what is the type of neuro uh, what is the type of leukodystrophy it is if it is a bilateral symmetrical periventricular white matter involvement butterfly shaped pattern then it is mld, MLD. if it is in the parieta occipital region posterior involvement either crab a or ald distinguish between the two by giving contrast contrast enhancement plus ald, ALD. okay predominantly subcortical white matter involvement including your u fibers macrocephaly NAA peak in the uh, MRS diagnosis Canavans okay Alexander Sim. predominant anterior. anterior frontal predominance with cyst Alexander okay 
Felicia's nurse buffer, it is a hypomyelinating disorder. So MRI will give you the clue about the diagnosis in leukodystrophy. That is white matter degenerative disorder. Whereas here in gray matter degenerative disorder, mostly it will show you atrophy. Okay? Now the neuroimaging is over. What else will you do if you are given a case? First, second one will be a good ophthalmologist opinion. Especially you should look for cherry spot, spot macular, macular degeneration, RP and then optic, optic atrophy. Then hearing evaluation, whether the hearing is involved or not. Then the X-rays, radiology, X-rays can give you, uh, can you uh, in uh, certain disorders, it can show you disastrosis sagadosis. multiplex. Multiplex. What is called disastrosis multiplex? Radiological findings which, we, which you come across in uh, MPS is called the disastrosis multiplex. multiplex. Tell me other diseases in which there will be disastrosis multiplex. Five minutes. Or three. Fast, fast, fast. GM1. Manosidosis. Okay. Mucolipidosis. In these things you can have disastrosis multiplex. Any other investigation. Then electrophysiological investigations like EEG. Nerve conduction studies are very much important for leukodystrophy. Name the leukodystrophies which are associated with the peripheral neuropathy. First three. MLD, MLD Krabis. ALD. Okay, right? Okay. So EEG is important, then nerve conduction studies, then VEP in NCL. Uh, in, uh, suppose you have a case of NCL, then ERG. So electrophysiological test. Then any other thing will you do? Any other thing? Suppose you have come to a conclusion with the clinical findings and your uh, 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 imaging wise or other investigation wise. Genetic. You have come to a conclusion what it is. Then you will go for enzyme assay. enzyme assay. For that you should know the name of the enzyme for each degenerative disorder. Okay? Go and read and write it in your notebook. So you will go for enzyme assay, either in the peripheral blood or in the skin fibroblast. Skin fibroblast. Okay? For NCL you can attempt a skin biopsy, axillary skin biopsy. Similarly, certain other disorders. For example, if it is in the mitochondrial, you can go for muscle biopsy muscle also. Biopsy. In certain disorders, you can go for bone marrow biopsy. Bone marrow will show you the characteristic storage cell, especially in Gotcher and Neiman Pick. Gotcher cell, Neiman Pick cell, how will you distinguish? Random storage cell. Crumpled, crumpled tissue paper appearance in, in Gotcher's. 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 Very good. It is PAS positive. Whereas in Neiman Pick? Sudan black positive. Very good, my dear. It is pseudonophilic. It is PAS negative and it is. Sudan black, black positive. positive. So this is how you can bone marrow biopsy or your hematologist can give you a clue about the diagnosis. Then you can proceed with the enzyme assay. Okay. What is the enzyme which is affected in Neiman Pick? See my dear. Not reading. Bad. Cholesterol transferase. It is not an enzyme. Whereas in any other Neiman Pick it is an enzyme. Cholesterol enzyme. Protein. Cholesterol yester Yester transfer protein. Okay. So you should know all these things. Suppose they are asking, you must be able to answer. Right? Then finally you can go about the genetic mutation studies. Okay? Genetic mutation studies is very important for the, for, for, uh, for, for. Con conf confirmation, next, next, next counseling, okay. prenatal line. Prenatal, okay. giving the genetic counseling, prenatal counseling, etc. Yes. First. So how do you, yes. how do you confirm? Somebody asks you, how do you, what is the most confirmatory test? for mitochondrial, for NCL, for other neurodegenerative disorders. Mutation analysis. Mutation analysis. What is the test name? Exome sequencing. It's a Clinical exome, exome sequencing. Exome sequencing. sequencing. Okay. NGS. Next generation exome, exome sequencing. sequencing. Next generation exome sequencing. That is the name of the test. Okay. So it's not just mutation analysis. That error is gone. Now you test all the exomes that uh, you suspect are involved. So not only you are going to test only Krabby's disease or NCL disease like that. Now it is all panel. You test all the genes, what are the uh, exomes that are affected. And they have given in this particular patient one pathogenic uh, mutation uh, in the particular NCL type 7. So we think clinically she is uh, like I didn't know about this uh, pathogenic mutation at all. But uh, when we had the history and examination at the end, we had this in mind. Possibly she is a NCL. Okay. So that's how it should be rather than just going through this and coming reverse direction. Okay. Any doubts? Any Management. specific doubts? Management. Past. Multi multidisciplinary approach. Symptomatic therapy. Symptomatic so therapy, therapy. Etc. 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 Is there any? Enzyme replacement therapy is available for ah, certain diseases. Gotcha's disease. For, for Gotcha's disease. What are they? Four diseases. 
Gotcher's disease, hemiglucerase alpha, tyliglucerase and villaglucerase alpha. Then Fabry's disease. Gotcher's disease, Fabry's disease, and then Fabry. Crabs. Fabry, Crabby. And then yellow hydronidase for uh, mucopolysaccharosis. MPS type 2. Number one, Gotcher's. That is the first one. Next. MPS type 1. Yellow hydronidase. Type 1, type 4, type 6. Moon. Apra. Fabry. Then Pompies. Pompies. Or disease kit is available. They will ask you. Okay. Remember all these six diseases. Then anything else? Is there a role? Bone marrow transplant. Bone marrow transplant for crabbies. Metachromatic glucose. For metachromatic ALD. ALD. Pre-symptomatic stage. You have picked up in the very early stage. Then only. Not afterwards. After this. Okay. Then uh, whether this enzyme replacement therapy, by giving the enzyme, uh, you can reverse the neurological finding? No. 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 It does not cross the BBB. Okay. Remember all those things. And the ALD, la, Lorenzo's oil. Suppose you have a case of ALD. Think about Lorenzo's oil. Try OLA, try ericate. 3 is to 1. Okay. I think we have finished everything. We if have covered all the points.